Hello, it's Ken again. Uh, you with a look at my collection. Uh, it's time it's my uh, decades, uh, the best decade, 1970s. And this the year we're covering this morning is 1976. Um, as always, all comments are gratefully accepted. And if you like what you see, subscribe. Um, hope this is of some interest to you. This is my personal favourites from 1976. It's about three years into my collecting and seriously getting into music. Uh, so tastes are developing now. So see what you think. First up is a Stonefire classic for me in any, any year would it would have been released. This is Jailbreak by Thin Lizzy. It's got some fabulous songs on it. Jailbreak itself, uh, the classic boys are back in town. It was their breakthrough album. It made them mega stars. Uh, it's quite an impressive cover as well. This is a cutout. Um, die cut for the sleeve. Uh, this is a reissue. It's one of the albums I didn't survive through the years with me for, for a variety of reasons. So I had to rebuy it, which is a pain, I know, but there you go. Uh, so that's Jailbreak Thin Lizzy. As I said, it's got Massacre on it. No, I haven't got Massacre on it. It's got Emerald, that's the song I think. Oh, Emerald Cowboy song, and a lot of the songs that made up um, the live album Live and Data Switch was to follow. So there you go, that's number one in the chronological order is where we're doing it. It's not in the, it's not a top ten in the sense of number one is going to be the, my favourite or anything. This is just ten of the favourites and a few bubbling unders as well. Moving on to number two, it's Rush, 2112. This really did make a big impression on me. I think it was on um, Tommy Vance's Friday Rock show where he used to always seem to play a, a long track every every week. and. Uh, lots of uh, classics in that in, in, in those days of uh, uh, side, side length uh, opuses, and this is a major one. Twenty one twelve is it? It, it? it almost feels like a film when you listen to it. It's brilliant. Uh, there's a B, the, the B side of the album has got uh, yeah. What, what were they wearing? The B side of the album is um, it's got four. I think it's four shorter songs. Uh, Passage to Bangkok and etc. Uh, it's, uh, it's well worth listening if you've not listened to it. Um, it is a Russian acquired taste. Getty Lee's voice is particularly um, is a bit of marmite for some people, uh, but for me they're one of the best bands ever. As a what they managed to get on quickly on stage um, with just the three of them is amazing. So that's Rush Twenty One Twelve. Next up is uh, one of my favourite bands at the time and still is the Rolling Stones, Black and Blue. Uh, this uh, was slightly panned when it came out. This is Ronnie Wood's full first album. He had a little dabblings uh, on the previous album. Uh, this is a great sleeve, I feel. It's got all the, all the five members there, Ronnie and Charlie on the back, and Mick, Bill and Keith on the front. Uh, Fool the Cry was a, another man, might single. It's a great ballad. Uh, my favorite track on here is Memory Motel. It's quite a long track and it's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's quite a variety of styles. There's a bit of reggae on there as well, so it's stone style reggae. Um, there's other songs like Hand of Fate and etc. etc. And it's uh, well worth a listen if you haven't heard it. That's Black and Blue, Rolling Stones. Next up, another band that were at the time were massive for me. Uh, this, I got into them before the, this came out, so uh, I wasn't jumping on uh, Don't Fear the Reaper. It's what most people know them for, but they're they appeal to me because of the science fiction overtones, the occult overtones, the horror overtones, the symbols, everything, the lyrics. They appeal to my vivid teenage imagination. I was 16 at the time, um, and uh, it still does. So this is a great album. As I said, uh, there's some great tracks. ETI is a fantastic track. Um, there's uh, the Reapers on there, of course, and Tattoo Vampire and Morning Finals, a particular favourite of mine. So that's uh, Agents of Fortune, great sleeve. Uh, yes, we're on a bit of a vacation, a sabbatical, if you were, and then a few of the artists were starting to make solo albums. This is John Anderson's Alias of Sun Hill, which what a fantastic sleeve that is. That's, uh, this, this could be a yes album. If, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he played most of the instruments himself or contributed most of the music. Uh, don't hold me to that, I might be wrong. 
Uh, that's one, and it's a great, it's a great lesson. Uh, if you if you do like yes, and you're not hit, hit this, I would I'd give it a whirl. Stream it. Another great band of those times, Hall Quinn, who were in the midst of their peak period. I feel this is astounding. Sounds amazing music. It's a pastiche of the um, comic mag American comic magazine. Um, look at that. That's a bit. Uh, Aryan in it, you know. <laughs> That's open for you. Uh, great album, Reef of Madness. Step on what was on there is another one of my favourites. It all together is a great album. So this is Hawkwind. This is astounding sounds. It's amazing music. Music. So we're halfway through my ten now, I believe. Next up is a live album. Got a few live albums this year. This is Roxy Music. Viva, Viva Roxy Music. It's, uh, as you got a little subtitle as they all have the, the early ones the live Roxy music album uh, this uh, this is this oh, so sometimes you listen to this I listen to it and I think oh I wish it was a double album because you've probably got Virginia playing other tracks it's quite a eclectic mix of um, of the first four albums uh, the standout is in every dream on my heart take as it would be it's a uh, it's uh, to my young years, it was a astounding song. It's still, it's still pretty amazing now. Through the strands on it, out of the blue, pajama rama, chance meeting both ends, bird in the bogus man, and if there is something great, there they are, there's the band. Eddie Jobson was there, um, and I think John Wetton's on it as well, somewhere, so he's not pictured. Uh, he's playing the bass, Eddie Jobson, strings, synths, and keyboards. What a fantastic lineup! You know it gone by this point, obviously, but you know even then, what a astounding lineup! Boxing music, Fever live album, and another great live album. Leonard Skinner, One More from the Road. Uh, I remember taking, bear with me this. I remember taking this to a party I went to. Uh, everyone else was with disco songs and all sorts of things. I turned up with this. I put it on at the end of the night, and everyone was astounded when he had Freebird. Nobody did to the band, um, so but uh, that went down well, um, and it is a classic live album. Crossroads is a, a fantastic take on that song. Uh, Tuesday's gone, and you got my ballads on there. Saturday night special. Um, it's a, a, a truly classic. I've got the CD, which is a I think it's a free disc version. It's got out other night versions and stuff like that. But it really is a band at their their mic before the tragedy. And number nine in the, my top ten favourites from '76. It's playing on in the background. Yellow, a new world record. They were also uh, uh, I don't know where, you, where it, this is their peak or out of the blue. The next album to come out, but they were. I think a lot of these groups were producing two albums a year. We'll come to that in a minute. More of that. Uh, it was astounding times of music. This has got uh, several singles on it. Telephone line, rock area, uh, tightrope, so fine, living thing. Uh, do ya, Shangri La? Uh, this was when they're still quite a big band. Uh, seven people, I think. Yeah, which is my favourite version of Yellow. Uh, so there you go. This is a new world record. The last of the ten is another live album. Forgive me for my live album choices, but they were big in '76. This is Led Zeppelin's soundtrack to the song "Remains the Same." Uh, this is. Uh, and I, I still didn't know what Robert Plant and Jimmy Page looked like, but I saw the film and we went to the pictures to see the film. Uh, and it's got some strange uh, fantasy sequence in it. And Peter Grant I mean, makes his appearance as a gangster, if my memory serves me well, which I don't know is I, ironic. Oh, he really saw himself as that gangster. You can see the lineup of tracks under all the classics rock and roll, Celebration Day. Song remains the same itself, Days and Confused the whole side. Then you got No Quarter, Stay With You Evan, and then Moby Dick, which is a bit uh I'm not into particularly the drum souls, Neil Peart apart. But uh and then uh Oh Lot of Love. Brilliant. Oh, my Bobby Lone design, this is where the double um double thing comes. It's, it was it was close. This ne definitely nearly made it in. It's closest anyone's been yet to get breaking. I had to I'm an hour about this, but it's just on the outside. It's trick of the tail uh, from Genesis. 
and they followed up late in the year with another great album, Wind and Weathering. So what a year. Imagine bands now bringing out well, quality albums. I like that. And finally, the, the other bubbling end one is a, a band that's excused the pound, sneaked onto my radar around about this time. This is Golden Earring. This is the Hilt. It's one of the lesser no albums. It's just, well, it's a great album. Really good rock band going Golden Earring with at this time. They proceed to be a great band, but they you know, one of the greatest they are in, in the, this period. So this is to the hill, to the hill. So that's my 1976 favourites. Um, any comments as, as usual, gratefully received. And I'll see you soon with a, a, another look at the, another year in the 70s. Thank you, everybody.